harmony, harmony, that's the way that it ought to be. You and me, made to be together in harmony, living in harmony, harmony, that's the way that it ought to be. You and me, made to be together in harmony, sweet fellowship, Jesus in our midst. Life flows from sin to church, men by men are blessed when Jesus is in our midst. Peace and harmony, Jesus reigning here. The church puts out this command, no room for doubt or fear. When Jesus is in our midst, I have never known a time like this till the spirits around me rise. Come and see what God is doing. Lord, we love you. Sweet fellowship, Jesus in our midst. As life flows, I'm in the church, and men by men are blessed. When Jesus is in our midst, living in harmony, harmony, that's the way that it ought to be. You and me, made to be together in harmony, living in harmony, harmony, that's the way that it ought to be. You and me, made to be together in harmony. to come into his presence. Let us pray that the Lord will speak to us today.
let us pray that we will live in harmony as family, as family, as children of God. We will live in harmony. Let us pray the Lord will speak to each and every one of us as we have come to his presence this day. The Lord will speak to you. The Lord will speak to everyone. Let us pray that the spirit of the Most High will speak to each and every one of us today. Father Lord in heaven, we thank you. We worship your holy name because you have brought us this far. We thank you for the sacred scriptures in the children's section, the youth, the young adults, and even in the, in the adult section. We thank you for how you have spoken to each and every one of us today. Lord, we pray as we go through your word now, you will speak to us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Before we go today, we will be taking this message in continuation from the search the scriptures where we have studied today. This morning, by the grace of God, we looked at a very important teaching in a search the scriptures lesson 802, where we study about the precept for handling elders and widows. And in continuation of that, that is going to lead us to the message, which is pastoral admonition for fellowship in God's family. Pastoral admonition for fellowship in God's family. Our key text for today will be, we'll go back to Philippians first before we come to Timothy. Pastoral, as we look into pastoral admonition for fellowship in God's family. We'll be going through the, the epistle of Apostle Paul that he wrote. We just want to back, back, go back, take some few chapters back to go to Philippians to see what he was writing, what he was he wanted the 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 the, 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 the Philippians in his message to Philippi. We'll see from chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, as we look into pastoral admonition for fellowship in God's family. Like the chorister has sung, they've just ministered to us, we need to live in harmony one with another. And as we do, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter, five, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 5, I'll read. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the house with the bishop and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from, our, from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. From the search the scriptures topic that we, we studied today, we can discover from there that the work of the pastor is very, very vast. However, the pastor is not the only one that makes up the church. The minister is not the only one that makes up the church. The pastor needs you, the pastor needs me, the pastor needs every one of us. We need to come together in harmony to do this work. And that is why when God was giving his gift, distributing the gift, he distributed some pastors, not only pastors, some will be evangelists, some will be teachers, some will be apostles. And if you look at it, the pastor is one, one unique person that he needs to have this pastoral umbrella ministry that covers everyone. 
However, because this task is so much for him, he cannot do it on his own. Just like Moses was trying to do in the time of old, and he had to sit down and cancel people from morning till night. Then Jethro come and gave him the advice, break it down. And that is why the church has broken it down. And that is why in the New Testament, everything was broken down. Then you suture them together and they become one whole family. So we see the pastoral duty is in, in leading the flock of God is a very, very whole song laborious one that demanded task for the ministers, for the leaders in the church. However, for this pastor to be able to do this easily, it commences from the process. It commences from when the new birth experience happened. That is where the apostles, that is where the evangelists will come in. The evangelists will go out there. We reach out to the people, pull them in. The pastor himself is an evangelist. The pastor has the fivefold ministry tied under his umbrella, but he's got some other people that need to help him out. They will now go there. The evangelist will now go there, bring the people in. So as they are being bringing, as, as the, the evangelist is bringing the people in, we want to key these people into God's family, to have fellowship in God's family. Therefore, God becomes the father of that sinner, of that man, of that woman that have just gone through the experience of new birth, which is what the evangelists have done for him. So the evangelists bring them into the household of faith and they come in. And when they get into the church, then the assignment really begins. We don't just give birth to babies and leave them in the hospital. We give birth to babies, we bring them home. The brothers will participate, the sisters will participate, the parents will participate, everyone will participate in bringing this child. Sometimes the child will cry. Sometimes the child will disturb everyone's sleep. But we don't still need to, we cannot throw this child out because the child is going through a learning curve. And after that learning curve, the child will become as we are. And I pray that the almighty God will help us, that we all, we all flock together, fellowship in God's family. We all plug together in one from the time of new birth experience to the time where it continues and we grow and the person continues to grow. Here we see that the Lord Jesus Christ referred to such people that are in his own fellowship. He referred to them as his own brothers. They went to Jesus Christ. And they say, your mother, your brother, you say, who? Who is my brother? My brother are the ones that do my will. And as we have come to the Lord today, to look into this sermon, I pray that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. We also see in the teaching today, in the, in the message today, we see there is a role to play for everyone in ensuring we collectively achieve God's architectural pattern for the family. The house caring fellowship, you've got a role. The chorister has got a role. Every person in the house of God has a role to play because we are family. I pray that the Lord will speak to us and where we needed reformation, he will reform us. Like we've had some question, and we've got the summary in the search the scriptures. I pray that the Lord will visit each and every one of us and plug us together so that we can achieve the goal of his ministry in Jesus' name. We also see that this call is mandated to all. Let us quickly look at, let's go back to that Philippians where I have read. We see in Philippians chapter one, in verse one to five, it emphasizes more on grace. It places the emphasis not on merit, on grace. Let's look at that in Philippians chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says, Grace be multiple, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see at this junction that the first element that can bring us, that plug every one of us into the fellowship 
where we can have the, the free flow fellowship in God's family is we need to place our emphasis on grace. The day you became born again is not the day you got to where you are, brother. So when you see a newcomer, new, 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 new converts still coming into the household of faith, you need to nurture them. You need to give, give, give them patience. Sometimes we need to be patient with them. So in this place we saw, the first place where we read, it emphasizes on grace, the gospel of God. The second thing it emphasizes on is the gospel of God. The grace, he said, that place said, grace be unto you. Grace be unto you and peace from God. So is the gospel, it emphasizes on grace, the gospel and the God of grace and the gospel. Three things we see in that area. And they all go with the word G. Number one is by grace, you get plucked to God. And once you get plucked to God, you now need to carry in, continue in the gospel of the Savior. The combination of these three, they brings the sinner into fellowship. Number one, without God, there is no fellowship. So God is the premise of our fellowship. Without him, there is literally no fellowship anywhere. So not only that, we also see that he is the father who calls us into his own family. Your money did not buy salvation. You might have triple PhD. You might have postdoc. It cannot buy salvation. You might be the prime minister of United Kingdom. It does not buy salvation. It is by grace. Someone paid for us. Jesus Christ paid for us. And by him, it's where we can now have the fellowship. Without God, there is no fellowship. God is the father. He, has, he is the one that calls us into his own family. It is the family of God. It's different from your own maternal or paternal family. This is the family of God. And not only that, he is the father that calls us into his own family and by the message of the gospel that emphasizes the grace of God and the beloved brethren today to remain in continuing and in the abiding fellowship. Therefore, we must remain in the gospel. Number one. Secondly, the good news of the grace of God. So when you see a newcomer just coming into the fellowship of God, we don't need to be too strict on them. Because Jesus Christ wasn't that strict on us. And when he paid the price for us, he wasn't that too strict on us. But he gave us time to grow. As, as we continue to grow in the family, we continue to grow, then we can metamorphosize into what God wanted us to be. The second place we want to read, we want to go back to read in Philippians again, in chapter 2. In chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5 again, in chapter Philippians chapter 2, there the Bible says, it says, if there be there for any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love in any fellowship of the Spirit. Let us pause there. Here we see Apostle Paul was giving this, 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 this admonition to the, to, to the Philippians, to in Philippi. He said that if there be, if there be, therefore, any consolation, that consolation has to be in Christ. That is number one. Not the way you do it in your village, not the way you do it in your country, not the way you do it in your constituency. That consolation has to be in Christ. And then the next thing he said, in any comfort of love, in any comfort of love, it has to be done in love. It did not need it to be done crude, crude. No, it says in any comfort of love. Then in, in, in that place, he said, if any fellowship of the spirit, so the call is that the fellowship is calling us to is not the one we want to do in our flesh. It is the fellowship in the spirit, if any bowels and mercy. It has to be done in mercy. Fulfill ye my love, and ye, ye be like-minded, having the same love. We need to have the same love in the fellowship of God. Having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. The 
there should be nothing like, oh, he is a Caribbean. No, I am from West. I, I am. I am from. I am from Jamaica. He is from. He is from. He is from Grenada. No, we cannot flock together. No, you know, I'm from Jamaica. Oh, oh, he he he, he is from Saint Lucia. No, we cannot flock together. Oh, I'm from Nigeria. Oh, she is from Ghana. No, we cannot flock together. Oh, I'm from the northern part of Ghana. He is from the southern part of Ghana. No, we cannot flock together. Oh, I'm from the eastern part of Nigeria. No. All this needed to be broken down at the point of salvation because we are being called to have one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let us pause there. How did you correct a sister? How did you correct a brother? How did you correct a sister in the church? It should not be done with true strife or through vainglory. You are not correcting someone because you just want to show that, yes, I have been in this place 25 years before you. No, you are doing that not with vainglory, but you are doing that in admonition unto the Lord, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. If I esteem you and you esteem me, I'm trying to esteem you better than myself, you are trying to esteem yourself better than, esteem me better than yourself, there will be no competition. I pray that the Lord will help us. And in verse four, in verse four he said, look not every man of his own thing, but every man also on the thing of others. Verse five, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. So we see in this place, Apostle Paul was giving this admonition. He was telling them, he emphasizes in, in chapter two, chapter one emphasizes on grace, God, and gospel. In chapter two, chapter two emphasizes on, on making the fellowship work. What is that thing, brother, sister, that is gonna make our fellowship work? Therefore, the ingredient that make fellowship work, number one is consolation in Christ. Everything is tailored to Christ. Everything is not tailored to know, you know, I am an extrovert. Everybody needs to be an extrovert. No, you know, I am a sanguine. Oh, he's too sparky. No, you know, I am cool phlegmatic. No, you know, I am rocky phlegmatic. I, I, I am cool phlegmatic. No. Everyone should not go your direction, but everyone should go the direction of Christ. Consolation in Christ. Then the next one we see there, the next ingredient, that will make us to unite in, in the fellowship is comfort of love. The sister talked about how did we care for, for, for widows. It is comfort of love. You just want to check the older person. You want to check, oh, this person, this is what this person should be going through. I can be of help. If we should get to a point where we are no more sympathetic with one another. When a brother is going through pain, you don't say and say, oh, brother, sorry. No, that is not the fellowship Christ is calling us to today. You need to transport yourself to be empathetic and not sympathetic. Put yourself in his shoe. How is he feeling? Then when you understand how he's feeling, you'll be able to package accordingly. Oh, this is, the experience is the best teacher. When you try to experience what someone is going through, You'll be able to support him. You'll be able to support her well. Then fellowship of the spirit. And don't forget, another ingredient is bowels of and mercy. Fulfillment of joy, like-mindedness, having the same love. We need to have the same love. Being of one accord, we must uphold this. If we uphold this in our church, across the region, across the nation, Anywhere we go, we will be unique. Why? Because after a sinner had been saved and transformed from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of God, there is now need for continuity in the fellowship of God. And for that sinner to be able to continue in the fellowship of God, we, if we, we need to emphasize all these ingredients, consoling them in Christ, comforting them with love, having fellowship in spirit with them, bowels of mercy, fulfillment of love, like-mindedness, having the same mind, being of one accord. If we, if we push them, we back them up, we support them this way, which is not carnal, not sensual, not even social, 
you know, we are not having social structure in the church. Oh, because I'm in IT, all of my friends have to be in IT. Oh, because I'm, in, I'm a medical doctor, all of my friends have to be medical doctor. Oh, because I have got PhD, I'm not going to make friends with anyone that is, that is having a master's degree. I'm going to make friends with only PhD. Oh, if I'm doing business, I have no business dealing with those that are in full-time employment. No, we are called to, shoot, to, to drop every social structure but by the spirit it is it is it, it is it, it is reciprocal the same bread and it's also tell us that nothing should be done through strife and nothing should be drawn done through vain glory in words there should not be complete we should complement one another in the fellowship we are not called to competition i drew a lot of lessons from the body and from the military if there is a war now the military, they will go back to the war room. They will plan. And when they finish the planning, they break into different structure. You see the airborne is there. It could be in the Air Force or the military air or the Armed Forces airborne. They will say, oh, you are the one that will go first. You give the firepower. When you give the firepower over there, then the armory will come as the second. Then the armory will do the grand clearing. And if it's a, if it's a Marine one, they, if they need to go through territorial waterways, then the marine will go there. Then they will now come, they will now say, then the infantry will come. The infantry is the land soldier. Then the infantry will come. But I'm telling you, brethren, if the man that needs to do the firepower, if he fails, the whole of them, the casualty level will fail. So they, will, they all work together in one. If the armory said, no, I don't care because nobody even recognizes me. They don't even recognize me. I'm in the back seat. No one is going to see me. The whole military will suffer. Put it back to the body. There's some elements of the body you don't see. It's called synapse, neurons. You don't even see the neurons in your body. They are not praised. Nobody praised neurons. They only see the eye. You don't even bath your neurons. You only bath you. You only give your. You groom your hair. You you clothe yourself. The neurons are hidden in the spinal cord. And if the neuron refuses to do its job because it is so simple, I'm telling you, the whole body is there. The whole body cannot function well. Then another part of the body, the brain. You don't even see the brain. Nobody praises the brain. They just, this man is brilliant, this man is good, this man is that. You don't even see the brain. But when, when the, the hand is feeling hot, the message will come. It will say it will go to the brain. The brain will say, "No, drop that thing." I will, if the, if when the brain say drop that thing, if the hand refuses to draw, the hand is going to get burnt, and the what the hand is part of the body. So each member of the family should contribute to the betterment of the order in fellowship. Every member is important, brethren. Every member is important. And as we do, the Almighty God will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's look at the third chapter, Philippians chapter 3. There I will read just verse 10. That the name of Jesus Christ, that at the name of Jesus, sorry, Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, that I may know him. This is what we need to pray for every day, that I may know him. He stresses the need to get more deeper and deeper and deeper into Christ every day. Every member of the fellowship needs to get deeper and deeper and deeper into Christ every day as more as more one experience the death of self-life that I may know him. What did he want to know? And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of, the, of his spirit being made conformable unto his death. You want to know him every day? For you to know him every day, one experience of the death of self-life, one experience self-centeredness, self-will, self-interest, desires, ambition, all these things will be crushed. Then the next thing, we just want to bring 
the betterment, anything that will make the fellowship to be better. Until self dies, the fellowship cannot grow. I'll say that again. Until self dies, the fellowship cannot grow. I pray that the Lord will help us, that we will crucify self in Jesus' name. Let us go to the next chapter, which is in Philippians chapter 4, from verse 1 to 3. Therefore, my beloved brethren, beloved, therefore, my beloved brethren, and long for my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dear, my dearly beloved. You see the emphasis. We need to address one another as beloved. If I am seeing you as my beloved brethren, I will not think evil against you. If I've got money in my account and you're suffering, I will back you up. We cannot see a brother that is in need and you are saying, let us pray. The brother cannot eat. It's not a time to pray. It's a time to, do, to, to get into action, to perform. Go to your account, bring out the money, feed him first. Verse 2, I beseech your dears and beseech Saintic that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. Help those women that are widows. Oh, we, because, we, because we, we, we teach about the widows. There are some women that are not widows, but they needed help. Why? Because their income power cannot meet the expenses confronting them. Help those women. Did you, did you, did you hear that? He was entreating them. He said, I entreat thee also, true, true your fellow, help those women which labored with me. As many women, as many brothers, as many sisters, that are laboring, some are in the institution, some have just come as students, we need to help them. Help those women which labored with me in the gospel. And he started naming people. What a lesson did we learn from this man? Look at the, the way he named them. He was talking of Yodias, he was talking of Saint he was talking of Clement, he was talking, he was then he now said, and others. Do we know ourselves? I know we are in Zoom church, but it's not an excuse. When a newcomer come into the church, did we, did we care to know him? Or you say, no, it's the responsibility of the pastor. I remember when, 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 when I came into this ministry in the 80s, the first day I got to the church, the, that same week, immediately, brethren, they just get my detail, my address, and they located me, as big as the city was. And they were following up, and they were following up, and they were following up, and the result is what you see today. Some people make me to stand today. So what role are you playing in the life of the new converts, in the life of our youth, in the life of our children? He named them. I pray the Almighty God will help us. Using the language of love and fellowship, it underlines another area of fellowship appreciation. He was saying, ah, please, you need, I'm thanking these people. We need to appreciate one another. Appreciation of and affection of one another. Brethren, we need to use good language one to another. Why? Because we are member of God's family. First Timothy chapter 5. We read that place today as part of our text. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule, rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the world of doctrine. The work of eldership is two, is two, is two dimension, is twofold. Number one, they need to rule well. Number two, labor in teaching the word and doctrine. They are not to be lazy, but to be zealous in the office which they are called. In your little corner, where you are, the Lord has called you. You are an elder in that place. In the house fellowship, you are an elder in that place. In the, in the location where you are, you are an elder in that place. We need to be zealous 
in this office to which we have been called by the Holy Ghost. Such servants of God, they are worthy of double honor. I cannot overemphasize this more than our teacher already sorted that in the Sunday scriptures. Our leaders are worthy, not of single honor, of double honor. And I pray that the Almighty God will help us. And adequate maintainers, we need to maintain them. We should not give them conflict, trouble to manage. Whenever they think of us, they should be happy. And I pray that the Almighty God will help us today in Jesus' name. In the course of our teaching, we'll be, we'll be considering three points. The first point we will consider today is call of Christ to fellowship in God's family. We see it is Christ that is calling us to the fellowship in God's family, not we, not the pastor, not the leader. It is Christ himself calling us to have fellowship in God's family. Then point two, we will see caution against compromise in the fellowship of God's family. Number one is call. Number two is caution. Why did we need to be cautious? If we are not cautious, there is tendency, there is possibility, we may add. There is tendency, there is possibility, some members of the family, they will bring error inside. And when they bring error inside, if there is no law, if there is no rule, there will be no offense. So we need, we are cautious against compromise in the family. And then finally, before we pray, we will look at the third point, which is commitment of Christians in the fellowship in God's family. Let's go to the first point. Commitment. The first point, call of Christ to fellowship in God's family. Ephesians, let's quickly go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, as we look at call of Christ to fellowship in God's family. Ephesians chapter 2, I'll read 13 to 19. Ephesians chapter 2, 13 to 19. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who had, who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, verse 17, and came and preached peace to you, which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizenship with the saints of the household of God. Fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God. At this point, we see that it is the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ that was able to break the middle wall of partition between us and God, there is a great gulf that has been fixed, and that is the sin, the gulf of sin. And that gulf had been there. You cannot cross over. They, they, we cannot cross over to the other side. But there is need for one man that can conquer sin to come. And that is Jesus Christ. And when he came, he broke that middle wall of partition. Remember before the, 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 the reunification of Germany. We used to have the Western Germany and we used to have the Eastern Germany, the East Germany and West Germany. There's a wall in between them. They, are one, they can't cross over, but they needed to be an alignment sometime, some years back. 
and they break down the wall and they reunite together. So that is what happened. We were born in sin, but it is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross that was able to break down that middle wall of partition for us and, and translated us into the son, into the into the kingdom of his dear son. This called the sinners. It called sinners back to God. And what did that do? The cross of Jesus Christ crosses that sin. You see, the cross of Christ is what crosses that sin. It crosses it out completely, and we are now called by the Lord. We are not called by ourselves. We are called by the Lord. In Colossians chapter 1, in verse 12, there he says, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us to be partaker of his inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So the call is the call of Christ. Brother, if you've already get this call, keep this call, cherish it. Keep it well. Keep it safe. Keep it well. Acts of Apostles. In Acts of Apostles, we saw the disciples of Christ and the other brethren. They tarried there, and immediately the power of the Lord fell upon them. They got this salvation experience, then they can now start from there. I pray that the Lord will help us. If there is any among those that have not been that have not received this call, you are not yet a member of God's family. It is only one passport that gets you into becoming members of God's family that Christ is calling, it is throw away sin, repent from sin, and be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him. Let us read in Acts of Apostles chapter 2. In Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 37. Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. And that is just the summary. Men and brethren, if you are at that state today and you are saying, men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized. And as you do, the Almighty God will accept you into his family. Having been called as into the family of God, remember, there is no competition in the physical body. If the head start to compete with the leg and say, I'm the head, you are just the leg, you are the one that suffer, you are the one that go everywhere, I won't cooperate with you anymore. After some time, the head will get sick. If the leg refuses to carry the head, the head is off. And if the eye said, oh, you are the one that is only eating mouth, you are only the one that tastes all the food, I'm no more going to cooperate with you. There will be conflict. Having been called into the fellowship, we are to live and we are to uphold one another. We are to uphold that fellowship. We are to uphold that brotherhood in Christ patiently, patiently with one another not in competition. We need to compete against sin and not compete against one another. Why? Because there is no competition in the physical body. Because they have different functions to perform. So it must be in the body of Christ. Competition will only lead to trouble because we don't have the same part to play. But we are supposed to complement one another. So if your profession is a teacher and you know that somebody is will need your help in the church, go and help him. I'm not talking of just biblical teaching only because you have been called 
into the ministry by Christ. And once you are called into the ministry by Christ, then we don't compete with one another. We just need to start complementing one another. Therefore, in the kingdom, there is need, even if there is need for us to help the weak that are just coming, that just repented last year, or they backslided and just came back today, or they backslided and came back five years ago. There is need for us to help them so that they get their stability back into this family of God. As part of the body, the physical body, depending on one another, so also the body of Christ. None is disposable and none is indispensable. No member of the church is disposable. Jesus Christ told us a parable. He said, if you have 100 sheep and you discover one of them is missing, keep the 99 in a safety port in a safety place, then you go back and look for that one. Because the soul of every man, the Lord is interested in it. Point number two. Point two. In point two, we will see caution against compromise in the fellowship of God's family. We are being cautioned that compromise, there's possibility that compromise will come. There's possibility they might, they will, they might be compromised. But we are giving caution. Let's quickly look at 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy, sorry, let's go to it. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Ephesians 5, 10. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 10. Proving what is acceptable. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So we see, he's telling us that we should reprove. Even though we are in fellowship, he said in verse 11, he said, have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. So when you see a brother, the brother is erring. The Bible says, we need, we need to go after them, to bring them back. However, we should not compromise. Because we see that though the fellowship with one another is very, very important. However, the Lord still give caution that there should be no compromise. The character and the virtue of the church is such that have to be honest, open-mindedness, righteous, and holiness must be at all time in fellowship. We quickly look at that first Timothy we wanted to look before. First Timothy 5.17. Let the elders that rule, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. You see? That is why the pastor will always pull us say, brethren, this is the way. This is the doctrine. This is the way. This is the doctrine. You cannot go right. You can't go left. You need to go by the way. This is the way. This is the doctrine. So when the pastor is, is, is rebooking you or is trying to correct you, you don't look at it and say, ah, they, they are too harsh. No, this is the scriptures. You see that in Ephesians where we read chapter 5, in that Ephesians chapter 5, he said, proving that what is acceptable unto the Lord. And as we do, the Lord will help us. There is no room for darkness in the fellowship of God. Why? Because sin and satanic characteristics 
they cannot be condoned by no reason. They should not be condoned for the fellowship that the Lord is calling us to is a fellowship that appeased the Lord. Is a fellowship that the Lord is pleased with. Second Corinthians chapter six. We see Second Corinthians chapter six in verse seventeen. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, said the Lord. Here we see that the Lord is calling us to have clean fellowship with him. Because God will not, will not, he would not that you should have fellowship with devils. God is not happy that you should have fellowship with sinners, with devils, not drinking alcohols, not committing immorality. That is not a type of fellowship that he's talking about. You cannot have fellowship with devils. The fellowship of God's family is not open to worldliness. It's not open to satanic, demonized, sinful, backsliding people or false prophecy. It is for people who are born again. It is for people who love the Lord. It is for people who will live and will stand by the standard of the word of God. They don't want to bend it. They want to keep it as it is. They don't want to modify it. They want to keep it as it is. It is that is the sort of fellowship that the Lord is calling us to. The bond of love in the fellowship of God's family is stronger than any ties, than any family ties you may have or you may think about. The ties is natural in family must not be allowed to rob us of the fellowship, the true fellowship with God. God wants us against compromise. He, command, he commands that people who are out to make us compromise, they should be marked. Just mark him. If you know you have a friend, and that friend, after you've heard a sound doctrine message, and that friend will say, ah, my brother, this thing they are saying in church, it will only happen in Africa. It is not in Europe. You know, Europe, we are civilized here. All those things, we cannot do them. The Bible says, mark those people. Why? Because they are trying to cause division and avoid them. If you have tried to correct them, you've tried to correct that person and he's not taking correction, then don't let him make you to forfeit the kingdom of God. You need to mark those people that will tell you, oh, this thing doesn't matter. Any brother that is saying, oh, brother, this thing is in the Bible, but it doesn't matter. Please mark that person and report, try to correct them. If they refuse to be corrected, bring them to the elders of the church. Bring the matter to the elders of the church so that you seek counsel from the church. Don't take everything they are telling you, hook, line, and sinker, any counsel that is outside the Bible, throw it off. The Lord commands that people who are out to make us compromise, they should be marked, they should be avoided. They could temper with our destiny. When I was in secondary school, I remember a story. I have a friend and I even brought him to the FCS then, but he was, because he's my friend, he was, every counsel he's giving me is counsel of sin. He's counsel of sin. Is cancel things that will make me compromise, things that will make me go completely out of out of track. He will tell me, "Oh Moses, you know this mathematics is not is too hard. Let us not attend the class." And I discover I start dropping, I start dropping, I start dropping. Eventually, I came to my senses. I said, "No, this friend is not helping me. This is just mathematics." And I cut away from him. And by the grace of God, few years after. That same, my, that same friend of mine, he went to the institution, studied mathematics and statistics. I went to the institution, studied the same course. Today is in America, I'm in the Euro, I'm in UK. But as I then, if I had followed his counsel, I would have missed my God's planned destiny for me. But I just caught away from him. Having become member of God's family, we are to separate ourselves from every perversion of people who seek to draw disciples of themselves. 
You know, after the pastor has finished ministering, a brother wants to make you his own disciple of himself. The Bible says we should avoid such. The salvation of our soul made Christ to die for us and the minister of the gospel of Christ to nurture us in the way of the Lord. Neither the church or its leadership can afford to lose any one of us. Romans. Romans. Let's look at Romans chapter 16. Romans 16. Romans chapter 16. Verse 17 and 18. Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. I did not write this. This is the Holy Scriptures. If there be any brother, if there be any sister, whose every counsel they give you will do two things. Number one, will cause division in the fellowship of Christ. They are the one that want to stand in between and say, Sister, did you know what Sister 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 A is saying? Did you know what Sister J is doing? This is what they are doing about you. Just mark them. Tell them to stop, stop, stop. Advise them. If they did not take that counsel, mark them. The Bible says avoid them. Because they will want, they want transitive law to happen in your life because they are not going well, because they have issue with this person, they want to translate that issue to you so that when you see this person coming, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't relate with them. The Bible says, mark them. I'll read that place again. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Our pastors have taken time in this ministry to carry us through the 22 doctrine. And it goes on and on. They'll carry us the 22 doctrine. If there be any brother, if there be anyone that is coming and say, my brother, this thing they are talking about marriage, one man, one wife. You mean in Europe, it's a paper marriage that we just do. I'm not doing the real marriage. It's a paper for visa. Mark those people. Reprove them. Let them know they are already going contrary to the, to, the, to the Bible. They are going contrary to the doctrine. Mark people that will come and say, ah, my brother, you are doing personal business. Oh, this is how you can do it, not to pay the actual tax. Mark those people that will teach you to defraud the government because they are going outside the doctrine of what we are taught. Mark them and carefully avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see that? They may be in the church, but they may not serve the Lord because they are teaching you to be anti-gospel of Christ. They are teaching you to be anti the doctrine you have received. This is the doctrine you have received. They are giving you a new sermon, a new message. Mark those people. They are telling you about handkerchief healing. They are telling you about, about palm reading. Mark those people. Check what they tell you. If it is not in the Bible, Throw it in the bin. I pray that the Almighty God will help us to obey the Bible. The Lord will help us to obey the Holy Scriptures. And as we obey the Holy Scriptures, we will be blessed. That is when we can be in the true fellowship that the Lord is calling us into. Second John. Second John is one book. I read verse 9 to 11. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, that person hath not God. Whosoever, that is the way the Bible puts it. He said, whosoever, he may be a bishop. Whosoever. Whosoever it is, the person may be a bishop. He said, whosoever transgresseth, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, that person hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not 
this doctrine, if there be any sister, any brother, and bring not this doctrine unto you, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. I pray that the Lord will help us to understand this scripture. That if anybody bring any new doctrine outside what you know, you mark them, you don't receive them. The Bible said in verse 10, it said, if, and if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your heart. I pray that the Almighty God will help us. You need to take, you need to watch. You need to take your stand, watch your steps. And as you watch your steps, that's how you can journey in the family of God. Point number three, commitment of Christ, of Christian in the fellowship. Commitment of Christians in the fellowship. Commitment of Christians in the fellowship. Our commitment. We see that we are called. Every Christian is called to be committed into the fellowship of Christ. Everyone is called. We are called to be committed into the fellowship of Christ. We are called to be committed. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse, verse 21 to 22. We read that place today. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21 to 22. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one another, doing not nothing in partiality, lay hand suddenly on no man, neither be partakers of other men's sin, keep thyself pure. What a verse. Keep thyself pure. We discover that commitment is you need to pay. You need to keep going. Even though there is going to be fear, the fear of God ought to be the driving power that will keep you going. You look up, you say, the pastor is not there, but I am committed to God. God is over there, up, looking at me. You keep going. Commitment of Christians in fellowship in God's family. If the fear of God is your driving power, as a brother, if your wife is not there, you remain relentless. You remain unshakable. You continue. You don't, you don't fiddle. You don't say, oh, because, because the, the wife is not there, oh, because the, the church is not there, then you can do anything. No, you can do nothing. Why? Because you are committed, you've, you've committed yourself to the Lord. You can't even be partakers in other people's sin. I pray that the Almighty God will help us, that we will continue. Our commitment in the fellowship is not just ourselves alone. We need to encourage others. We need to encourage other members of the church. If a member has a character defect, what you need to do, you need to be committed and say, yes, I'm going to help this brother. If a sister has a character defect, you don't need to stay there and roll the line of thumb and you are castigating them. No, I need to help this sister. This should be help. And that will keep him from deviating from the truth. It's a commitment. Not only that, you have to watch over yourself. Not just, not just uh, helping them. You are to watch over yourself. Because when you get to heaven, you cannot tell God and say, oh God, it is this person that make, that make you not to make it to heaven. No, you will make it in Jesus' name. You need to watch over yourself. Not only watching over yourself, 
your thoughts. You need to watch over your thoughts that is ruminating in your heart. You need to watch over it on a daily basis. Not only on your thoughts. You need to watch over people who come to you in the place of work. You need to watch over the strategy of the enemy. I remember some few years ago in my place of work, shortly after I became a team manager, shortly after, I had to work with another manager, very, very strict manager, very, very strict. And he's got managers that have been working with him before. And we have a meeting and that meeting was scheduled 5 p.m. on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, that meeting is 5 p.m. And I look at it and say, what? I need to lead Bible study in North Holt by that time. And I prayed and I was like, no, I need to watch over what is coming. It might be deception from the pit of hell to say, yeah, let's, let's crash him out of church first. And using, to take me away from the Bible study, I went to this manager, but brethren, I prayed first. I went to this manager, I said to him, I said, sir, they have been doing this meeting 5 p.m. before I joined them. I said, sorry, if you need me to be in this meeting, we have to change the time. And the man was looking at me as, what is, what am I talking about? And I said to him, and he said, why? And I gave him my reason. He said, no, 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 no. I don't do this church thing. I said, sorry, you don't do church thing. But that is, my, that is my driving power. That is where I draw my strength from. The strength that I used to do this work, I draw it from that church. If I can't go, then there will be a problem. And he had to change that time. And before, even before he changed that time, the devil so much bring a trial. His own senior manager came, and they came to my office. And it was on a Tuesday. And they scheduled a meeting with me exactly that time that I should leave to go and start Bible study. And I say, sorry, I need to go, even though with a senior manager. So we need, and beloved brethren, the Lord help me, nothing happened, nothing. They changed the time just because I said no for my own Bible study. I pray that the Lord will give us courage. The courage to be committed, to drive, to drive ourselves, to make sure that anything that wants to take us away from the presence of the Lord that we watch over it. You are watching over yourself. If I did not watch over myself, maybe I would say, uh, Pastor, I'll just call region over here. I'll say, Pastor, I cannot continue this Bible study. Why? Because I am having work at that time. Genuine. But that genuine was from the pit of hell. And that would have taken me away from my spiritual blessings. I pray that the Lord will help every one of us that we will be committed one to another. That we will be committed one to another and we will be committed to doing the things of god and once we are committed to doing the things of god you are watching yourself let us look at galatians galatians chapter 6 verse 1 galatians chapter 6 verse 1 the bible's bread the bible says brethren is calling us brethren now because we are member of the family of god he said brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as and one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What is that place telling us? This is a fault we need to correct in Christendom. In occultism, if one of their members fall, they will go and fight. They will fight, they will bring him back. For, few, for some of us that went to institutions where that, that used to have campus calls those days, they fight to defend, to protect their members in the world. When, when, when they, they are, their friends have problem, they fight. They say, ah, you don't come to drinking joints today. Why? Why don't you come to drinking joints? Oh, I, he, he, we say he did not have money. They say, don't worry, we'll pay your drinks. Come. But turn the table around back to the house of God. Are we doing that? When a brother has fallen, when a brother is in danger, when a brother is going through hard time, do we, do we rally around about that brother? I read that place again, verse 1. Chapter 6, verse 1, Galatians. He said, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, that shows that a brother can be overtaken in a fault. 
that we which are spiritual we should restore such one not in your not in your tribal way in the spirit of meekness when you want to restore such one do you just go to tell him to whack his head with another message that will make him want to commit suicide in meekness considering thyself lest thou also be tempted bear ye one another's body we need to bear one another's body you don't wait until you hear a message like oh we need to take care of the widows in the church no you don't need you don't need that message the bible say bear one another's body you see this student this 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 brother is a student do we ring him up and say my brother how are you coping with your academics what can i do for you i remember some times ago in this church one of our brethren was have to start an academics i told the person i say ah send your work i will type it for you you do you do the research send it i will type it not not in africa in this location in this region i say send your work i will type it for you that's how we can help one another we should not be praying oh god help him no there's some prayers that needed action it's good to pray but back it Bear one another's body. A brother is going through immigration stress. You that have passed through that journey, you know how it is. Did you ring him up and encourage him? Did you ring him up and say, brother, what can I do for you? Did you encourage him? A sister is going through matrimonial challenge. You that have passed through that area, sister, did you ring her up and say, what can I do for you? I pray that the Almighty God will help us. We should check up with one another. We should be compassionate with one another. There, there should be this attitude of pity, courtesy, politeness towards one another, not being rude, not saying, oh, me, I don't care, I'm an extrovert. Remember, we still have the introvert. Not even the introvert, we have the, we have the advanced one. We have the ones that they are, they are called cool phlegmatic. They are so cool, they don't talk. We have them. We need to carry one another, knowing that ye are also called and you will also inherit the blessing. We must be in unity with other believers of like precious faith. We are to be obedient to God and we are to be obedient to the word of God, whether those in leadership over us are present or they are not there. Disobedient to the doctrine you know before is sin against God. It is sin against God. It is most likely that you have lost your first love, although you may still be very busy in the activities of God. Check my brethren. Check your fold. The songwriter said, check your fold, my brethren. Are the children in? How are you playing this love? Is there any also that you, that you can help in the church? I pray that the Almighty God will, will help each and every one of us to take this word into practice in Jesus' name. Finally, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Commitment of Christians in the fellowship in God's family. Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things said he that had holding the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candle? I know thy works. It's written in red. Jesus Christ said, brother, sister, you have 10,000 pounds in your account. And a brother cannot buy five pound food. And you tell that brother, let us pray. The Lord said, I know thy works. I know thy patience. I know thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and how thou hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience for my name's sake, hast labored and hast not fainted. I know how you are doing all these things, and you have not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou have left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first work or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove you, remove thy candlestick 
out of this place except thou repent. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. We often say, oh, if it is in Africa, oh, if it was when I was back home, oh, if it was this, oh, in the, in the 25 years ago, whatever changes you needed, you are the agent of that change. You need to begin the change. Let the change begin with you. Whatever change you are advocating for, let the change begin with you. The Bible says, I know thy works. How, how, how fervent you used to be. You say, oh, they don't love me. They don't share things with, with me. You, have you shared your own thing with others? Oh, pastor have not called me. Did you call other members? Oh, this is what this sister is doing to me. Oh, did you forgive? Remember Jesus Christ forgave you so that the fellowship can flock together. So that who are you? To come into the triangle, God, the Father, the Son, and they now bring you in. Did you qualify to be in the household of faith? Brethren, we need to pray. Are you a caterpillar in our fellowship? Or you are a pillar? Are you a caterpillar in the fellowship that God, God has created? Jesus Christ burnt his, he, 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 he dropped his blood on the cross of Calvary to save that child, that soul that came into the house of God and you ignored. And you refuse to take into the fellowship because they are not Yoruba like you, because they are not Igbo like you, because they don't speak Ghana like you, because they are not from Kotoko, from Ashanti like you. No, are you a pillar or a caterpillar in the house of God? How committed are you? How committed are you? Are you watching over your life? Or you are watching other people's lives? You are watching that sister that did not tie her head gear properly. You are watching that sister that did not dress properly. Are you watching yourself first? You watching that brother Oh, that is so that to you in your analysis is not is not living right. Have you watched yourself first? You need to watch yourself first, then watch others. Let us pray. You have a part to play. Everyone in this ministry have a part to play. The pastor. You don't leave it to the pastor. When a newcomer have come to the church, did you help them to stand? Remember somebody helped you and you are standing today. Did you help them to stand? Someone helped you and you are standing. When you came to the UK, new, someone helped you to put your feet on the floor. When you became born again, someone helped you. Are you Play, are you putting that back? Or you just emphasize me, 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 me. It has to be me and me alone. Me, myself, and I. There's no I in unity. There's no I. We need to be united. There's no I in love. Let us pray. Everyone has a role to play. Pastor Emmy, please kindly round up the prayers, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for what you are doing and what you have taught us today, both in the of the scripture and in the uh, in the message. Lord, we're praying that you would make us to be practicers and uh, 
make us to be people that this message will be read in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we're praying for the body that you, as you put us in a body, that will go around as if we're that body and will live like a body in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, Lord, because we live in our side. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I hand over to the moderator, um, I just want to say hello. Also, um, please, pastors and wives, and the, the pastors, the wives, should please uh, wait. Promoses will create a breakout room for us just now, so that we need to have a quick meeting. Um, so, so that's it. So for Sister, for Reddy, remember Sister Tony, you will be joining. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sorry, we, we've got a few announcements to, to make before we go. We have a few announcements. So for, for the People, Pastor, I just mentioned, please, you just wait. I'm going to create out a breakout session for you. And I'll move you to that breakout, to that breakout groups now. You just wait briefly. The sisters in Hanslow, you are starting your, you are starting your house caring fellowship today. And the sisters have Sister Stella, Sister, Sister Elizabeth, and Sister Tayo have been sending invitation, the, the joining link. Please, if you have not received, please contact them. Contact any of them, and they will, they will, they will give you the joining link. Sister, 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 Tayo, sister Elizabeth, and sister Stella. So they will give you the joining link to join. So the the Hanslow sisters they are starting today, and the Almighty God will will bless you as you attend in Jesus' name. Amen. So other announcements, the regional uh, regional children for this week, your Bible study is on, it's on Wednesday, 6 to 6.50. Your Bible study is on Wednesday, 6 to 6.50. So let us not forget to do the poll. We, we have the poll. You can start doing the poll now. Please, let's not forget to do the poll. You have the joining link to the poll. Let's not forget to do the poll. Uh, in addition, brethren, uh, if you have any testimonies, we'll be sharing testimonies every Sunday. For the members, if you have any testimony, try to link up with your pastor. Uh, he will conduct, uh, contact the coordinator on Saturday and make room for the testimony to be shared on Sunday. But for Hans Low, uh, region for the Hunslow branch, you have to contact Bro Philip for testimony for men and Sister Dupe for women. If you have any testimony, that should be done prior to Sunday, latest Saturday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to display the poll now. In case you did not have the, in case you did not have the, the the link, Pastor, I've just sent the poll to everyone now on chat, please kindly log on. You can also send your attendance, but let's do this poll first. Kindly log on and do the poll. Kindly log on and do the poll.